Yo, what's up guys? So today we are gonna see, what if, Naruto x Blackfire x Raven x Rose Wilson, part 1. Hope you'll enjoy this video. So before we start please subscribe to our channel, and like this video. So let's get into the video. They're all gone the young man said, as he stood in the center of a barren wasteland. The gravity of the situation had yet to hit him, as he could only stare blankly at the ground around him, the earth ripped asunder. Scorch marks riddled the ground around him, blood laid caked on the ground in the mud. The only thing that gave the place around him some form of life, was the large body of water overlooked by two large figures made of stone in the cliff side facing one another, only to be kept apart by a waterfall. He dragged himself towards the large river, and took in his appearance. His hair which was once as bright as the sun now at deep grey to the point it could be mistaken for a sea of silver, as it flowed down his back to his mid-back. To top his head were two ears that could be identified, as lupin of some form. His eyes which were once a remarkable sapphire blue, now receded to a pale grey-red hue with reptilian slits, where his once rounded pupils once resided. His hands and feet were now given an addition, as he had a pair of fierce-looking black claws, where his nails once remained. Beneath his eyes were a set of three whisker-like marks that were deep in definition. His clothes destroyed beyond recognition with only his usual orange and black pants, and his signature black trench coat with the red flames that held the kanji for Rakudame Hokage on the back, with a large scroll attached to his back with the kanji for belongings of the elemental nation scrawled onto it. Flowing behind him were ten long wolf tails that swished behind him in a hypnotic tempo that matched the color of his hair. This young man was none other than the Rakudame Hokage Naruto Uzumaki Namikis. As he took in his appearance his eyes changed to red, and black rings going from the center out. All he could do was think how did it all go wrong. Flashback, it had been a total of three years since the war started, and their numbers were dwindling fast, as were their morale. The cage of their villages had fallen. But not before the goddamn Hokage Tsunade Senju had named him her successor, as the Rakudame Hokage. But unlike the other villages, Kano had too was destroyed by the Ten Tails drama alongside the remainder of the allied forces. The man before him laughed maniacally, as he said what happened to you saying I won't let any more of my precious people die. Nine Tailed Fox. Naruto looked up, and saw the man before him, not a man, a monster in human form. He had long black waist length spiky hair. His eyes had the EMS in his left eye, while his right contained Pain's Renegan eye. He wore a black karate guy underneath red samurai armor, with his signature battle fan attached to his waist by a white cloth. He growled, and thought damn it I'm running out of chakra, and I have no more weapons Karama you got any idea. He heard a gruff voice in his head reply can't say I do kid, even though you absorb the other tailed beasts we are still a fraction of the ten tails original power. Well you could beat that bastard Madar, he is a different being in its entirety. He sighed in desperation, and said but there has to be something. Can we do the same thing the original Rakuto Senen did, and seal his chakra inside us, and maybe from there you could absorb its strength. I mean we've damaged the bastard enough to where it can't resist all that much right. He only had silence, as a reply for a few minutes till Karama said it's possible, but with how much chakra that thing has is ridiculous. And you're pushing your chakra coils to its limits, to survive the 8 other Biju's chakra going into your coils expanding them was pushing it, as is. If you want to survive, you would need to change. Again he sighed, but this time in a mixture of confusion, and aggravation so what do you mean by change? Exactly man. The oversized fox replied obviously when I say change I mean you will no longer be human, you will become a full demon. Of what variety your guess is, as good a guess, as mine. But to do this you would need to kill that bastard Madara first, and foremost. Naruto nodded, and said I already got a plan set up, if it goes right, I should have enough chakra to do what we need to do to absorb it. How long will the process to turn me into a demon take? You want an estimated time? I would say half an hour, and two hours tops since you're going to be absorbing me, and the others including the ten tails me, and the others would cease to exist. He nodded, and looked onward toward the corrupt, and Madara standing atop of his head. He said you'll pay for this Madara. For the lives you've taken the lives you ruined all for the sake of controlling the tailed beast. I will make you pay for it all. He charged at Madara, and Horatian towards Madara with it towards his chest, when Kyubi said the transformation process is at 50% completion your chakra has already begun to change, but your control is slowly beginning to fail, meaning if you want to do this, you better hurry up. 68% completion. Madara laughed, and blocked his battle fan, and said you are a fool to think that you're capable of defeating a god boy, when he saw Naruto disappear again, he heard a familiar shinner. Madara went flying from his perch on top of the Jubi's head. Naruto charged at him again before Madara landed on the ground, and had first appeared in front of him, saying the only fool I see is a man who is unable to move on from the past, and look toward the future. And that is what will lead to your demise today Madara Ichiha. He formed his new Sursengan in one hand, the familiar whirring sound of the race and shuriken could be heard. The Rasengan took a black form with a white glow added to his center, while blades of the shuriken took a dark grey hue. He said you should be honored you're the first to experience this new first hand. The blades of wind began to gain sparks of electricity, forming another set of blades on the spinning blades. When they landed they tore up chunks of earth and dust. 
when a cleared Naruto had the newer Sengen still spinning in his hand, as he held Madara by the throat, as he tried to break free from his grip. Kayubi said through their connection 80% completion by time you and him you will have enough Yaokai to absorb them, and win. And it was good knowing you Naruto Uzumaki Namikis Rakide in Hokage of Kanahagakur no Sato. 93% Naruto let a tear slide, as he thought and it was good knowing you the Kayubi no Yuko. The greatest of the tailed beasts. He focused, and said well Madara, this is the end for you. This is my newest. Fumarate race and shuriken. I would say it was a pleasure knowing you, but I've never been a very good liar. He gripped Madara's throat harder, and tossed him hard into the air, and focused some Yaokai into the spinning blades, making them glow ominous black, and threw it at last Nonichiha, causing him to be ripped apart, and burned by the corrosive force the blades gave off. Flashback pause. If only I had been stronger in the start of it all he thought sadly, but steeled himself shaking off such thoughts. He said if I focus on the past I can never move on to the future. Sakurama having you around for so long makes me feel a little lonely. He thought looking up towards the sky, as he saw a large group of storm clouds roll in. Flashback, ahaha ah, ha, that still takes a lot out of me. Or it could be due to the fact that my control is once again worth shit now after all these years. He he chuckled while Kurama just gave a groan that gave off annoyance. He said even now you pulled this shit. But if you weren't you then life wouldn't be of any entertainment. He the transformation process is now at 1% completion. Let me take control, and finish this. Naruto nodded, and handed control his eyes changed from the sapphire blue eyes that he's always known turned to a frightening red. He chuckled well kid it's been a pleasure fighting with you since the beginning, but now you're free from this curse. He started forming hand signs at a rate that even the Shuringen would be hard pressed to see. He did a total of a 1, and said demonic, Sbaina no Kiksh, Grand Demon Absorption. Hundreds of rods clashed with the two high class demons connecting the two with one another. Imagine when Naruto was trying to absorb Kayubi's chakra, when he was trying to use the chakra cloak, when he was pulling the strands towards himself. The two beasts scrawled with Kurama, saying grrr I won't lose. I won't lose to some incomplete abomination. The rods began to change colors while they split down the middle, on the side of the Jubi the rods turned to violet black, while on Kurama's side, the rods turned to reddish orange. Half an hour later during the power struggle the sides began to shift on the Jubi side finally began to recede, as Kurama's energy progressed forward till his energy completely overshadowed the ten tails. Slowly the strength and will of the incomplete beasts began to fade till there was no longer a trace of the battle of wills, but where Naruto Kurama stood was a giant black sphere that began to collect cracks of light that formed along its surface when it exploded, leaving the end of the human Naruto and the birth of the Nidane Jubi Naruto Namikis. In flashback, as he continued to peer up into the obsidian black sky rain began to pour, as he thought everyone are you crying? Is it because of what I've become or my inability to react faster than I should have? Unknown to him a figure began to form behind him till it said would you wish to have a new life dot. He flinched, as he heard a soft caring voice behind him, cautiously he turned around to face the entity behind him, and froze, as he saw in all terms a goddess. She had long waist length black hair whose bangs framed her heart shaped face. A figure that could only be seen on models. Her eyes were a beautiful grey that not only showed kindness, but also radiated immense power, and immediate respect. She wore a midnight black kimono with a red obi, and grey rope like belt that formed a bow at the back. Naruto could feel the power roll off of her, but it was overshadowed by the air of motherly compassion about her. He asked attentively excuse me ma'am, but who exactly are you? These lands have been absolutely barren since the defeat of Madar. Better question is how did you know I was dot she giggled, and said with a loving smile, it's rather easy seeing, as it's a mother's job to know things about her son. Any thoughts he had or whatever he was going to say came to a total halt, as she said a mo mother. He took another look at her, and true to her word the image of his mother he came across when he fought Kurama overlapped with her. He said mom. How are you alive, what exactly are you? She opened her arms giving the motherly sign for him to come to her. He slowly made his way to her, and embraced her, as she said well my son, you know there are multiple worlds that are a variation of this one. You do know that right? He nodded, as he said yay sir Oji told me about that when I was little. At first I thought he was making all of that up, but the more he explained it, the more it seemed to make sense that for every person there was a different world based on their actions and thoughts. But what does that have to do with you mom? She smiled, and said well son I am the main goddess of all worlds. As such I've watched over you since you were a little boy. I knew the consequences that you would face due to the actions of your father. He always was one to take the smaller view over the big picture. She said the last part solemnly. He nodded but paused, and said wait, you've been watching me since I was a kid. How come I didn't see you? She gave a sad smile, and said, but I've always been watching you, every time you were placed into the hospital from the attacks, and you'd spend multiple nights if not weeks there you'd play with that nice girl with the long black hair girl in the hospital. But that older blonde woman who would let you stay at her home before the first invasion when you were too far from your home, or it wasn't in any condition to live in. He paused, and remembered those two girls, and said you were Hikari-chan, and Oni. She smiled, and nodded, as she continued. 
I've seen how you were so alone and scared with everyone who would glare at you and harm you. It's child's play to create a body and place my soul into it. I had those two created so you would have some form of happiness in your life. He smiled as he turned to hug her. His tail's wagging behind him showing his happiness as he said tea thank you Kachan. She just held him tighter and said son I know that you are probably tired from the previous battle, but in another world parallel to this one, there is a powerful demon intending to conquer it. I need you to help protect that planet. He pulled back and said, if you're the goddess of all worlds couldn't you, just you know take care of this demon early. She shook her head as a reply and said, with me being the main goddess, it is against the rules set up by the council to directly interfere with the mortals lives. That's why I couldn't have taken you with me when you were born and had the Kyubi in you. Much like the other Jinchuriki's parents couldn't interfere with them. You all had a key role in the outcome of this world. Just as you have the key role to the outcome of the other world. She paused and said do you understand? He nodded and said with his usual grin of course ma. You're talking about the Nidame Rakuto Senin, Nidame Jubi no Kami, and the Rocky Dame of Kanahagakur no Sato. I never go back on my word, that's just who I am. She smiled and said I know I can count on you, my son. Before I send you off I must inform you of all that's going to happen, and I have a few gifts to give you. He nodded, as the two sat on the ground with him noticing that the ground around them was dry, and noticed she placed a barrier around them. She saw this, and said I thought you might not have wanted to have this conversation standing in the ring. He nodded, and proceeded to sit, as she mimicked his actions. She sighed, and said to begin with, the reason why I'm sending you to this new world, is because a powerful demon by the name Trigon is going to attack that world sometime in the future, with the assistance of some evil group who wishes to take control of the world. The people destined to stop them failed with him not only taking over that world but other worlds, as well. With your strength assisting them not only would you stop him, but that evil group in addition. He nodded while groaning, as he said Joy, another take over the world group, you just love torturing me don't you? She gave a soft giggle, and said it's possible, but I know you can do it. You mastered the Horatian which just so happened to be a bloodline you, and your father hold. The only reason why he used the kunai is because the bloodline was incomplete with him, but finished itself with you. She outright laughed at his expression, and said the Horatian isn't but a bloodline. In his notes it said it was a space-time ninjutsu. She shook her head, and said no it allows them, and anyone they are in direct contact with to transport from one location to another, either at will or with a marker like your father was capable of. He slumped and said, and just when I thought that I figured it out. Oh well, what are these gifts you were talking about mom? She said well I'm giving you the Sharingan including your Rinnegan, which seemed to evolve due to you becoming a god demon of course, you must master these eyes before you use them to their fullest potential. And unlike the Sharingan of this world, these don't have the effect of you having to kill someone you love or are close to be able to evolve it, or transplant a new set of eyes to get the final form. He nodded while she continued. The second gift is my collected and catalog knowledge of Tujutsu, seals, and his eyes grew white at that, but she pressed on and said, and the others will be given when you reach the new world, if you're sure you want to go. He nodded and said of course I'm sure. I can't just sit on the sidelines when people's lives are at stake. If I can help people I will do it to the best of my ability. She nodded and formed a passage to the new world showing a forest area. She said, as he started to step through the portal also since you're a high ranking demon and the only male god in that world, you're going to need a few wives he tripped, as she said before it closed, make sure to give me plenty of grand babies to spoil in the future son. Giggling all the while at his expression before vanishing. With Naruto, pain. All he felt, as he fell through the portal, was soaring ever blinding pain. He felt like his body was dipped in molten lava. His body shrank by how much he didn't know, but he was aware his age dropped by a strong degree. When he landed in the forest area he only caught the glimpse of one person in the area. A girl no older than five with long purple hair that went to the small of her back. Ash gray skin. And beautiful amethyst eyes. The only thing he could make out was the fact that she wore a purple cloak that was just a shade or two lighter than her hair. In Naruto's eyes she was one word. Beautiful. When he promptly passed out. A few minutes ago in the mystery girl POV. Sigh another dull day dealing with the monks and my mother at the monastery. Why the people here treat me like a disease I may never know. I walked down the halls of the monastery, out the front door, down the street when something possessed me to look up. When I did my eyes landed on the woods outside the walls of Citadel. Several thoughts hit me. You should go, and see what it is. Oh 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 it could be something one thought said. WW whatever I it is could be dangerous. Maybe you shouldn't another says in the most quiet voice it could muster. Go. I wanna see some action. Another says with bravado. I don't know mommy might be worried another said with sarcasm following the word mommy. Well I agree with the last one it could be a good idea to see what's wrong. For all we know someone could be hurt the last voice said with intellectual tone. I sighed, as my emotions seemed to outweigh me, and timid votes by a fair margin. As I proceed to make a run through the streets I come closer to see the glow that has yet to die out. My, and my other emotions continue to convert between one another through the whole run there on what it could be. Brave said it could be an invader. 
me and the others rolled our eyes at the fact that out of all the likely situations that's the first she jumps to. Tim had said it might just be some random occurrence that will die out wisdom, and I felt that, that it couldn't be any more likely than Braves. Happy said I don't know, but it could be cool. Everyone signed her round about their way of thinking. Knowledge being the only sensible one out of the group, said it could be someone who got hurt, and used some form of beacon in hopes of someone finding them, that was a thought everyone had to agree to. But to me the only thing I could think of was that if this was a person that set off that light, then I hope I can heal them. I can't remember how long I've been running or how far into the force. I just let the light be my guide, as it dimmed when I was going in the wrong way, and brightened when I went in the right. Once I reached the center where the light was, it began to fade till I saw a boy no older than I am, if not a year older. He had long silver hair that went to his hips. On top of his head were a set of ears that could be found on a dog of some kind. He appeared to be alive since when I stepped his ears flicked towards me, as if to catch the sound. His clothes were in tatters. He wore a pair of black sweepants with a pair of teen wolf tails of the same color of his hair if not darker, draped over some cylindrical object attached to some rope, with a slightly smaller scroll laying on top of it. I couldn't help but blush, as I noticed he wasn't wearing a shirt of any kind. It also didn't help when all your emotions, even the negative ones, were commenting on how attractive he was, even rage to my consistent surprise. And his skin was a shock for me, since nobody in Azerath had porcelain white skin. I mean sure there were people who had grey skin, black skin, hell even a rare blue or green every now and then. But never white. When our eyes made contact I was given a chance to see his face all in all he had an immaculate appearance. He was lean, his face could easily be mistaken for a young woman's, especially with his hair, as long as it is. Lung eyelashes included. But his eyes are what hit me the most. They were a far contrast of mine. They were beautiful grey with a red undertone. On his forehead was a chakra like my own, except it was an obsidian stone with a red lining. As the two of us held eye contact I began to notice that he appeared to be trying to focus his sight on him, but when he did he whispered a single word that I heard clearly, that made me blush beautiful. Not soon after that he passed out while I stood there with a strong blush on my face. I ran towards him to check his vitals, and it appeared to me that he was hurt rather recently. I rolled him over, but I still couldn't help but blush. I think it was permanently burned onto my face. For a six-year-old he had a physique many women older than me would hound him for. But it seemed to add to his immaculate appearance. His whisker marks were framed in sets of 6-3 on each cheek, they were surprisingly thick. His form was lithe, and narrow adding on to his feminine appearance. Her emotions didn't really add to the situation. Happy continued to say how handsome, and cute he was. Timid, and brave, and wisdom were going on about him being so well sculpted. Even rude, and rage were going on about the mysterious wolf boy's appeal. I had to agree with them which is a shock in my life, since I never agree with them or they never agree with each other. Happy, and wisdom were pestering me to rub his whisker marks. After enough pressure I caved, and gently stroked his whiskers. When I brushed them I was surprised by three things, one being that they aren't scars, they're birthmarks. Two they felt like they had a soft brush of fur that I couldn't seem to stop even if I wanted to, which I don't. And three the biggest thing is he started to purr like some kind of animal, but for him it was attractive. But I couldn't help but blush, as he leaned into my touch unconsciously, as the purring got louder. Rage said I hate everything, and all but even I find that downright adorable, and cute. With a hint of glee which had everyone shocked. Rude added I for once don't have anything rude or sarcastic to say about this, the purring is just an. Knowledge if I had to guess judging from his appearance, and the energy I'm sensing says he's in the Kami, an Azerathian like us, and something else, but it's hard to pinpoint. Raven said wow something you don't know, knowledge pinch me I'm dreaming her thoughts dripping with sarcasm. Knowledge shot back I only know what you do smartest. So if you're implying that I'm stupid then what does that say about you? Only Brave seemed to catch onto the beautiful comment the mysterious boy made, and said you am I the only one who caught on to that beautiful comment he made. Everyone froze at that except Happy. Happy she was bouncing around frantically, as she said yes yes that cutie did. And though if anyone else would have said it we would have ripped their arms off, then beat them with it, but I might not mind if he did. It seems Rage wouldn't mind either. I would have commented until several scars became visible to me, a hole the size of a person's fist just a little above his heart. And several cuts, and stab wounds, one of the most visible was one that went from his collarbone down all the way to his left heel. There were more, but those were less visible. Faded with time. The only thing I could think of was how could he get so many scars for someone so young. I began to heal the fresh injuries he had gained when I heard the young man groan. Naruto, POV. Ugg mom could have told me the transformation would have been painful. Who knows how long I've been out. I wonder who that pretty girl was earlier. Most likely a figment of my imagination. I tried to sit up, but a voice rang out to me you should stay still you're still hurt. At that my eyes snapped wide open for the second day, as I came face to face with a beautiful girl. I thought to myself Ugg I had to have my father's luck, and shy away from girls in the village, though it didn't help one like my father, I became one of Kanoha's most wanted bachelors. I could have sworn I heard a chuckle in my head for a moment, but I'll catalog that for later. 
After staring at each other for a moment I asked, as politely, as possible on where am I? If you don't mind my asking. I didn't want to have my first meeting with someone. She stared at me for a moment, as if to see if I was joking. It was hard to read her expression, since she seemed to lack expression emotion. Once she realized she asked me you're not from here are you? I guess I can tell you, you're in a forest in Nazareth. Again I stared at her blankly which I guess she began to get annoyed with, as she groaned, and said, it's a dimension parallel to Earth. Here we use an energy source called chakra where we can use it to heal medical ninjutsu parting. I repeated to myself medical ninjutsu, the art of healing. If I had to guess, there are other forms of ninjutsu, as well. Like maybe seals, offensive magic, and the like. She just stared at me with white eyes that sparkled, making me chuckle. She must have heard me when she cleared her throat trying to hide her blush. She asked me with narrow eyes how do you know all of that if you're not from around here. Mysterious girl POV, he knew about chakra, and some of the arts. That's amazing. But how if he isn't from here no other place knows of it. When I asked him how he knew of it he said I may not be from here, but my mother was, she lived, as an adult outside Azeroth you see. She taught a few minor things like chakra, and what it could be used for. She didn't really capitalize on it. A few years ago I was attacked. She saved me, but not at the cost of her life. She used a spell to transport me, but I had to find my own way here. When he said his mother died saving him oh you are my, and my emotions, hearts went out to him. To grow up so young without his mother. I decided to ask his name, and he said Namikaze Uzumaki Naruto he sorry I'm kinda used to the Japanese way of introducing oneself. It's Naruto Uzumaki Namikaze. But you can just call me Naruto, nice to meet Cha. He gave an ice squinting grin that made me think he was a fox for some reason maybe due to the whisker marks. It's weird, but if anyone else were to do what he is I would have thought they were weird, but it seems to fit. When he asked me for my name I proceeded to ask why when he said it's customary to give one's name after someone has done the same. I won't lie, he's rather polite for someone so young. I decided to humor him, and introduce myself my name is Rachel Roth, but you can just call me Raven, normal POV, he cracked a big smile, and said it's nice to meet you Raven Chan. Now you are describing Azeroth right. She just stared at him for a moment before scowling, and said first off it's Raven. Secondly I was Azeroth. As I said before, it is a dimension parallel to Earth. We have the use of chakra which you seem to have a grip on. Are you following me? She said with a raised eyebrow. He nodded again with a large smile, and said yes I understand, but if this is a parallel dimension, then does that mean there is a means of crossing between the two worlds? She paused for a moment, and said with a shrug yes there is. Though where it is I don't know. But we must get you some medical attention I took care of the minor injuries, but we gotta deal with the major ones. He nodded, and said lead the wary Chan. My trust is in your hands. She scowled again but sighed knowing he wasn't going to stop with the nickname, not that she hated it. Naruto thought she's a quiet one, but she seems nice to get along with no doubt about it. He jolted, making her look at him, and she asked what's wrong. A hint of concern in her voice. He shook his head, and said when I was thinking I could have sworn I heard something. She raised an eyebrow, and said something. You can tell me when we reach the medics. He nodded, and continued to follow alongside her. But oddly enough to him he could feel the fresh sense of negativity that reminded him of his time in the leaf when he was a child. But the thing that got him was it wasn't aimed at him, nor was it aimed at his new friend Gaidi thought this reminds me of when I was young, but what could she have done to deserve this? She doesn't seem bad or look like she's done anything wrong. Once again the voice rang in his head, and said maybe you two have something in common he shook his head, subtly trying to clear his mind of the secondary voice, though this didn't go from the ever observant eyes of Raven. The time they took to get there seemed like forever, as they walked to the medic. He would hear insults aimed at her silently it's the demon spawn how, could the council allow her to roam free the demon, kidnap that poor boy. He was thankful that his hair reached his hips, as his tails blended in with his hair if not slightly, and his ears just seemed like he retained some of his spiky hair, if for only those two points, but that didn't stop him from growling silently at the people around him, as he had flashbacks of his first childhood. Again this didn't escape the ears of the empathy, as she felt the anger roll off of him, and wondered to herself, and her why is he growling he can't hear them can he? Brave shrugged, and said it's a possibility he does have wolf demon in him. Knowledge said he might be angry at how they're glaring at us. I wouldn't be surprised if he asked us sometime soon. Rage remarked how would he know our pain. Timid said quietly HEM might know I am sorry. Rude said hey if he does he isn't, as adorably dense, as he appears. She just sighed, and thought that she would find out when they reached the medic to check him out which she was already doing much to her joy. Though Naruto knew this due to his keen sight he couldn't help but chuckle. Once the duo finally reached the medic center, the receptionist at the front saw a slightly pale boy with a minor tan and a pair of adorable whiskers. She had to resist the urge to scream cute, and rub them. But when she saw Raven she said, What do you want girl you may be welcomed in the temple, but you're not welcomed here go home, spiting the word girl like it left a horrible taste in her mouth. Raven may have tried to hide it, but due to his training, as a shinobi caught the shiver of fear run through her. 
he got in front of her raising his color intent lightly enough, yet still caused the air to vibrate around him in a small radius of five miles, only alerting the passerbys to their presence which caused many to sweat. He said with a smile yet his eyes held no kindness, only rage that was building up in him through the entire walk, and said actually madam, I was injured when Raven Chan here found me in the woods. You see my mother was born here but left, and married my father, and gave birth to me. She and I were running to a safe point to where we could get away, but she was already nearing death, and my injuries were too severe to get me to the portal on my own strength. She used the last of her energy, and sent me here. He paused lightly pushing the Kai higher, and said if it weren't for her, and what healing skills she has I would be dead now. I would like it if you didn't treat my friend so poorly K. His scary give the wrong answer, and I'll make death look like a mercy killing face, she nodded rapidly, which caused the Kai to evaporate, leaving those around them in a puddle of their own sweat. I even thought why is he defending me? Rage said annoyed with her constant questions maybe when you two get alone you can ask him. Shit this is the seventh time at least you've asked us. We. Aren't. Him. The other emotions nodded in agreement, making her sigh, as they were led into an examination room. It took 45 minutes to diagnose he had three cracked ribs, two puncture wounds, and two broken ribs. To be honest to the medics the doctor was curious, as to how he was alive, to which he answered with a raven chan use what little healing she knew to mend some wounds. The doctor nodded, and said she would be back in a moment, leaving the two demons alone in an uncomfortable silence. Raven was the first to break it asking why. He looked towards her, and said why raven chan. She shook her head, and said why are you being nice to me better yet, why were you defending me against the medic, and growling at the people in the streets. He just looked at her, and smiled though painted, and stained after a moment, and said it's simple Raven, I live a life similar to how you are blamed for something you didn't do or weren't a willing participant in the events that had transpired. As he said this he continued to lure in Raven, and her emotions who saw the look of pain reflected on his face from the screen in Raven's mind. The only thought on all of their minds are what could you have gone through to have such a look at Naruto. He continued, as if he read their thoughts. Where I'm from I was hated, beaten, and abused due to an attack on my village the same day of my birth. It went from the glares you just received to a well-thrown bottle or hard sharp object. Parents even told their children to avoid me at all costs or join in on the attacks. On my birthday it wasn't any better, as he said this she gasped bringing a hand to cover her mouth. He paused, as he took a long exhale. The years of pain he experienced were evident on his face. He said, as his eyes turned a darker color. On my birthday I was chased by mobs, I would try to run, but they would always find me before I could get home. Several times I've looked death in the face just for him to tell me you're not ready yet. He stared at the wall with an emotionless expression, as he recounted the moments before he was accepted in a morbid silence, letting the young girl across from him to digest what she was told. After what seemed like hours he said take a guess Raven. Why did my home glare at me like they do you? Why was I treated like a monster for something I wasn't even old enough to comprehend? The more he spoke the more she thought like me he's hated for something out of his control. He's glared at like me. And he had the familiar energy around him his Aisha stopped, as she and her emotions caught on to the final conclusion of his story. You're a demon like me aren't you? She said silently unsure of how to take this information. He gave a small smile while tapping the tip of his nose, and said ding 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 give this beautiful young lady a medal for getting the answer in one. Her prize the full history of my life before I came here one day in the future. She raised an eyebrow at the full history of his life. He can't be any older than I am a year or two older. How much history could a six year old have? She catalogued that bit of information away for a later time to ask or for him to ask about her to rebuttal when the doctor returned, and said well MR I didn't catch your name young man. He chuckled, and said well ma'am my name is Namikaz Uzumaki Naruto at your service. Now you were saying. She nodded, and said oh yes well you're free to go young man, but you should take it easy. Though it seems you don't have any records here in Azerath, as far as I can see. Do you have anywhere to stay? He nodded his head, and said yes I have a small hut to stay at that will suffice for the moment MRS. She giggled much to Raven's unknown ire, and said Monroe is fine Naruto. He nodded, and said yes thank you Monroe-san, I should be fine thank you. She nodded, and walked off once again leaving the two young demons alone again, when Raven said, you don't have a home. Why did you lie? He looked her in the eye, and said well I do have a home it just isn't built here in the city, and a prepared your leisure sort of home. She just raised an eyebrow in suspicion, and said why don't you show me then? There's still so much that isn't known about you. He chuckled, and said alright right follow me back out to the woods, I just gotta get my scrolls back. She nodded, and said fine just hurry up I've got stuff I gotta deal with again he nodded, and rushed to wherever the doctor placed his belongings. Once he got his belongings he, and Raven once again made their way towards the forest where she first found him. He grabbed the moderate sized scroll, and said to her from behind him, you might want to step back a bit, I don't want you to get caught in the backlash. Not questioning him she nodded, and took a good 20 paces back till she was in the tree line. From where she stood it was a good distance away, but she saw some elaborate markings on the inside of the seal. He started performing weird hand gestures, making her wonder what is he doing, and what is with those hand gestures I've never seen before. 
Knowledge said we're just gonna have to wait, and ask when he's finished Raven nodded, and waited in silence, as he finished the long line of gestures, as he said unseal. Before she could take a step forward a large plume of smoke followed by a huge gust of wind, caused her to lose her footing for a moment, making her cover her eyes in the process. When she was sure she could look again there was Naruto holding the same scroll from earlier, and to her surprise, a state of some sort, that had a swirl insignia at the door. He turned to her, and said care to come in for some tea. I'm sure you have a few questions to ask. She nodded, and followed him in thinking to herself why do I feel like my life is about to change the other could only shrug wondering the same thing. As they walked into the estate Naruto announced, as he stepped to the side welcome to my humble abode Raven-chan, she to say the least was in awe by the inside of the home. It had a moderate sized love seat that would fit for two comfortably. The couch next to it was a moderate sized black suede couch that formed a U-shape that several people could lie head to feet respectively. In front of it was a decent HD plasma screen television mounted on the wall above an old school fireplace. Next to the TV was a picture of a man that looked like Naruto, but minus the whisker marks, and instead of the long silver hair was a head of spiky sun-kissed blonde hair, and deep sapphire blue eyes. The woman he had his arms around looked more like Naruto especially with the feminine physique. She had the same eyes as Naruto, and hair color, and length. Must be his parents who looks like a mix of both of them, they look so happy Raven thought, as she continued to look around. As he continued to show her around they came across several bedrooms each with their own bathroom. Outside of those rooms were three bathrooms. A library of sorts big enough to hold the Azerathian library. The kitchen was rather large, as was the dining room though it looked like it wasn't used in some time. She then noticed a large door with a complex crawling on the door, making her wonder what was in it. On the wall next to the love seat was a guitar. After the tour she turned to him, and asked how did you do all this? This shouldn't be possible. He grinned, and said chakra. What I use was the ceiling arts which lets you use a variety of things like barriers, traps, explosives, etc. If it were possible her eyes were widened beyond description, she thought how is it that the monks never knew of these arts. She repeated her thought, and his reply was it's rather simple Raven Chan. The ceiling arts are rather difficult, and equally dangerous art to learn, and so few master. Why is that Naruto? Raven inquired wondering how it was so difficult drawing some squiggles. He smiled, and said it's dangerous because you need a high mastery in calligraphy for example. He pulled out an explosive seal, and said that there is an explosive seal. The stronger the grade of paper, and the design of the seal, the stronger the explosion. If you screw up the seal by the tiniest margin it will cost you mainly by blowing up on you. She gulped, and nodded her head understanding what I now meant by difficult to learn, but knowledge wanted to inquire more, as to the intricacy of seals, and said what do you mean so few masters. He scratched the back of his head, and replied well what I mean is that when it comes to seals it's like doing a puzzle blindfolded. To some the script for the seals doesn't click, as well for some, as it does for others. For example I take to seals like a fish in water where I was making high quality barrier fail safe seals at the age of 5, where the person who taught my father couldn't do the same till he was in his late 40s. She just stared at him, and wondered what exactly is he, for him to understand something so complex, and make it look easy, and to say a full grown adult with more experience took longer to learn the same. Brave asked maybe you should ask if he could train you. Before she could rebuttal, Knowledge said I must agree with the brute, we are in our second year at the temple learning from them, and we are being held back. People who started the same year, as us are already farther ahead. She heard the other emotions in her head, and oddly enough a soft voice cooing to her about being close to him. She made sure to catalog that for later to investigate, and asked him if he could train her. He asked for what reason would you use what I teach you. She raised an eyebrow, and asked what do you mean. He sighed, and said I learn all of this all the arts to protect the people I care about not for something like senseless violence. So tell me Raven, what is your reason for wanting to learn? That put her in a stump. She was just interested in the arts, and wanted to learn, but that made her think what would be her reason. Everyone hates her, but him, even her mother doesn't like her. He was the only one to be willing to be around her, and to make her feel comfortable with herself. The two of them even shared a similar pain, and felt a strange warmth from him, even that strange emotion that keeps talking about him in an odd light. That feel only seems to persist whenever he's around even though she just met him. She had this desire to be there for him. After a while she said I guess I guess it's to protect what I care about. He nodded, and said excellent, we can begin your training tomorrow, since it's late but quick question. Where is your mom, isn't she worried? She just frowned in retaliation, and said she couldn't care less about my well-being seeing, as she's the head of the temple. He frowned, and thought no to self have a strong talk with her in the future. He smiled, and said well then I guess you're just going to have to stay here then. That way we don't have to waste time for you to walk here to train. We can start bright and early tomorrow. She nodded as she yawned and said alright, but where will I sleep? He chuckled and said you're welcome to take my bed I can sleep on the couch till we can get your room set up. Again she nodded and headed up to bed but stopped at the top of the stairs and said thanks for everything Naruto-kun. He chuckled and said I guess things are going to get really interesting. Again, give me 40 more punches and kick each limb. 
Naruto shouted to the young empath, as he oversaw her training like always for the last three months. During those three months a lot has happened especially for the young wolf demon. Word has spread about his residence in Azeroth, and his association with his new friend Raven. The first month the monks wanted demanded to speak with them. When they received the news Raven was hesitant which was understandable since the head of the temple was her mother Rao Rolf. That was a moment that Naruto had to chuckle at. Flashback, Naruto. Raven asked, as she walked beside him, as through the temple to the council chambers. What's up Raven-chan? Something wrong? He asked his voice, and face filled with worry. Over the two months he's been a resident of Azeroth, he changed his clothing from his time in the elemental nations to something a bit practical for training and recreation. He wore black slipper-like shoes with red and white lining. His pants were black with three belts. The one around his waist was a gray wrap that had a red X across the front of the belt. The other two belts hanging off the sides of his waist, both had a white wolf tail at the ends of them, and cleverly one large one was disguised as his ten. He wore a black and gray tunic that had a sort of lotus design at the end of the shirt that was left open at the front, save for an emblem holding it closed at the top, and at the back was a design of a gray wolf running below moon. On his arms were a form of gauntlet that went up to his elbow. One, Raven still wore her clothing from when they last met save for when they're training. She said are you worried that the temple's monks might be up to something like Nair? I mean they aren't necessarily kind towards me, and I don't want them to farm you by association. He smiled at her even though she doesn't make it visibly known to anyone she cares about him deeply, yet she can't find what this feeling is, she still makes it known that she worries for him. He said, as her held her tightly making her blush sure chan does love me oh I love you too Ray. She shoved him off of her, and said stupid this is serious. I don't want you to get hurt the last part she said quietly making him smile appreciatively, and kiss her forehead making her blush, and said Ray I know you're afraid of what might happen, but you gotta remember I'm stronger than I look. You don't gotta worry I won't leave you. She smiled, as they stopped at the door, making her sweat a bit till he placed his hand on her shoulder, as he said. Besides, when have I ever taken shit from others? She honestly had to pause knowing that he was right on that concept. Whenever it came to people pissing him off was something that most never mentally recovered from even her emotions save for rage, brave, and oddly happy shook in fear rage. She was a purring mess same for the other two, making her fight down a blush, but nodded to her wolf friend, and said just be careful okay. He smiled at her, and nodded saying yeah I'll be careful Ray Chan now let's go, and get this over with the sooner we deal with these guys, the quicker we can get back to your tour training he. She had to suppress a shiver, as he said training. His idea of training was an inhuman amount of physical exercises, a full three hours of chakra control training, and an introductory course on. One of the introductions were on the self-adapting gravity and resistance seals, element protection seals to defend against someone using elemental attacks. It was the first time she ever wanted to cry for her mother. Once the two of them steeled their nerves, they walked into the council room to see a large arcade domain of an old-fashioned renaissance library. Inside the renaissance s domain were several stands that reached from one wall all the way to the other making Naruto sweat drop, and think please don't tell me this isn't like the leaf where they got someone who has a monster sized ego I pray not. Everything was deftly silent to the point where Naruto's enhanced hearing could hear each and every one of their heartbeats, making him wonder when someone is gonna say something. After a half hour of the monks just staring at them Naruto coughed and said is there a reason you summoned us or is this just a huge waste of time? I mean if it is we can just go, because some fucker decided to send a messenger to my home, and say the council demanded to see us at 5 in the morning. So if this meeting was a waste of time someone is gonna die. The Kai and Yao Kai the air was terrifying to everyone but Raven, who found comfort in the demonic energy wrapping around her like a blanket. He said with his voice enhanced, frightening everyone minus Raven well, someone is going to say something. The monk on the left said with little bravery he could muster well we heard that someone unknown to the populace of Azerath was causing problems, and his acquaintance following closely behind him he said accusingly while saying acquaintance with disdain. Naruto scoffed, and said while his voice is no longer demonic, it is still, as cold, as the arctic winds. Well if you got your facts straight you would also know that the person who ran the clinic was being a dick. When Raven found me I was injured pretty badly, and the medic refused to treat my wounds with Raven in my presence. All I did was give a verbal lashing after he disrespected Raven-chan. Raven-chan. Don't tell me you're close with this this thing. Another counselor practically shouted moronically invoking Naruto's rage, unleashing a focused blast of Kai solely on that man. When he saw a look of pain strike Raven's face, while her mother looked on condescendingly, he said now I know you didn't call Raven-chan a thing, did you? I know you, and the people on this council are not that suicidal. They all shook their heads quickly making him lessen the Kai slightly, while keeping his full sweet smile, as Raven's mother said, Now I don't think we got your name. He kept the smile which continued to say watch where you tread, and said I do believe it's common courtesy to give your name before asking for someone's in exchange madam. She nodded, and said pardon me, my name is Arala Roth, head of the temple, and you are. 
He growled silently which didn't go unnoticed by those present, as he said Ayu Raven Chan's mother, I am Namikaze Uzumaki Naruto. Arella said may I ask why the unneeded hostility to Naruto-san. He scoffed, and said I don't like women who hate their own children for something that they weren't responsible for. To be honest you, and everyone in this chamber, and out are fools, and ignorant ones at that. And unto her right ass with a scowl married on her face, and how are we ignorant child? You blame Raven Chan for something she didn't do. You treat Raven, as if she is the one who did the rape in the first place. A mother is supposed to love, and nurture, and protect her children, and yet Queenie there hasn't done shit for her daughter. She has only gotten the bare minimum of her training. And the fact that she has told me she's been kicked out of her home, and by orders to not let her into any establishment, he said his anger growing higher, till everyone started to see a faint silhouette of a four-legged figure behind him with ten tails. Arella said what but I never authorized such orders. Quickly realizing the slip up, as Naruto barked out ha so it's true you kicked out your own daughter to fend for herself you with a meager education in any of the arts here to defend herself. Yet you can't defend yourself from Trigon, as he took advantage of you. Her eyes narrowed, and said what do you mean by that? He smirked, and said well it makes me think. You are someone who has enough strength to handle Trigon, well you are in his human form with little power to at least restrain you for a moment from what I hear. Yet everyone here simply believed that you got raped. Either the people here are simple or you're a better actress than you are a nun lady. He sighed, and said, as she began to fume so this is what's going to happen. Raven is going to be staying with me from this point on permanently. You're going to take away the ban from preventing Raven to purchase anything if I get word that she has been overcharged for the simplest of things, or given rotten produce. I will come down here, and raise the place to non-existence. And I will take over her training scene, as you, and everyone here are utter failures seeing, as they refuse to properly train her. Arella asked, what right do you have? He focused on her, and raised his yaokai causing his ten tails to flare out, and said cause I am Naruto Uzumaki Nami fucking case, and I am a motherfucking biju. He put his hand on Raven's shoulder, and horationed them out of the room, leaving a group of shaken people, as they looked in his eyes that promised to keep his word. Flashback over, he felt a pair of arms wrap around his neck from behind when he heard what are you thinking about Naruto-kun. You must have been thinking pretty hard. Even though the two of them are together, he wanted to hold out on the physical aspect of the relationship, till they were older, since they were no older than 10, I elevated their age. He smiled, and wrapped his tails around her waist, causing her to be dragged into his lap, and said with a mock glare was that supposed to be a mock at my intelligent love. She pulled an innocent look on her sweat-ridden form, and said I don't know what you mean no all-knowing Jubisama. But they didn't do the actual act they did flirt constantly when alone, and kissed her maid out, and bathed together. When he was up one night after training late, she asked him to honestly tell her his past which he was hesitant about, but relented in telling her everything from his birth to his existence here in Azerath, which made her open up knowing he would defeat her father. She still wore the leotard with the long sleeves and pants, but that was for public wear for training. She would wear pants similar to Naruto's with a muscle shirt, hugged her developing frame, and low B-cup, as the hem of the shirt was tucked into the jeans, all in navy blue and black with a bit of red lining. Her hair goes to her lower back with a long white streak going through it. He growled, and said oh now you've done it. Before she could make a remark she was flipped onto her back with her arms above her head, as Naruto brought his head to her neck, and said, you should know better than to toy with a wolf raven, while well, docile in their domain doesn't mean they won't get aggressive. Small I'm folks. He went from her neck to her lips, softly making her moan, as she tried to mesh into him but stayed out of her reach, as he hovered over her his knee firmly pressed into her core, causing her to moan again, as she wrapped her arms now freed from his grip around his neck. He mentally smirked, as he licked her lips making her part them letting his tongue invade her exploring her mouth, as her tongue reciprocated making her pull him down closer. After what seemed like hours they separated regaining their breath, as he brought his face down to her neck, as his hands trailed down from her bare shoulders down slowly down her sides to come to a rest at her hips, eliciting a barely concealed shiver of pleasure. He said huskily in her ear while nibbling on her ear making her breath harder, and her heart pound what's the matter Ravenheim you feeling okay? He trailed a line of kisses, and soft bites from her pale shen neck to her collarbone, making her squeeze her eyes shut, and moan louder her core heat up higher beyond her control, with her only thoughts to claim him, as she succeeded in her effort of feeling herself against him. He trailed his right hand down from her hip into her self-soaked pants, rubbing her exterior through her underwear, getting a gasp from herself making her legs part letting him get closer to her, letting him have more leverage slipping a finger into her cavern, as she screamed silently making her back arc. He quickened the pace, as she started to moan his name louder making him smile to him as she said quietly and Naruto Kikun I'm gonna. Lime's over folks. Before she reached her finish Naruto stopped short, making her eyes snap open, and whying disapprovingly. He set his head still in the crook of her neck, and said sorry, but that's what happens when you mess with the Juby. Getting up he made his way over to the house from their training ground whistling, and said, as he peeked his head from out the door, I'll heat up the bath for you okay. 
I could only nod weakly, as my body continued to burn from his earlier pleasurable ministrations on my person, making the others laugh, as I growled out in frustration. I thought to myself haha very funny now can one of you heal me, my body is numb from his touch god I love that man. Rave said I just don't see why you don't take him to his rumor hours, and lay him happy, and timid nodded. Or at the least ask him to sleep with us from here on nightmares from our bastard father, or no knowledge muttered with love. Raven POV. Damn he really knows how to get me god I want him I thought to myself, as I watched the person I love the sole person to be there for me. Through everything I've experienced here, walk into a guess it's our home since I live with him, and I'm in a romantic relationship with him besides a happy and brave set in a sing-song manner making my already heated body radiate even more heat. I swear I heard a tree get uprooted, that's like the 8th time this month. Can't blame you Russ for loving him. He defends us loves us, and treats us with appreciation knowledge said in her know-it-all tone. Yay. And the fact that he has the physique to make any girl which it has weak in the knees. Rage said after Naruto helped me learn to get her to calm down, and taught her how to use her demonic power or, as he calls it Yaokai completely expelling my father from her, destroying his connection proof of my own demonic blood, would be the white streaks in my hair. He truly is a wonderful, and loving mate timid said with rude nodding in agreement. It's wonderful we have such an amazing man, but from what you've read in his study, strong beings like him need more than one mate. But I I know we will get along with him, as long, as they know we're the top bitch, and bears his children first then, and we get along with them, then I've got no problem love said, with rage quickly adding her two cents, though she they make a solid point we've been with him the longest if anyone gives him a kid first it's me, but with these horny bitches ogling my man like Naruto does when I make ramen, that wouldn't be so if you lay your claim on him now before these girls get desperate raven love said, as she, and the other felt raven still try, and fail at calming down her sustained orgasm, raven said weakly no I promised Naruto that we wouldn't do any of that till we were older another shudder ran through her making her moan and said as a forethought now can one of you at least heal my body he kinda made me numb brave said trying to get her motivated one ray he's at least in his 20s even though he's 10 but i will if you get to pull out our well-shaped ass and ask if you can sleep with him from now on once i manage to get up i check my ass and said okay well i won't deny the fact that it is nice firm and still growing rather shapely but why bring it into discussion and why are you all even badgering me about naruto you were all fine with me doing things at my own pace even timid growled at me and purred looking at him from the time we took a dip in the lake that's not normal for her. I could feel the heat in my core cool. As I muttered getting my balance shakily at least I have a reason to change clothes noticing the huge wet stain in the crotch. It's because of the furies in Raven 1. He's our unofficial mate till we do the actual act 2. We love him as much as you. But let's face it. You kissed every now and then cuddle when watching TV. And he even sleeps with you when you have those nightmares from your father which you've purged. And 3. Which can't be stressed enough you're hitting your mating cycle girl. Knowledge roared into my ear. My ears were ringing, as I groaned softly, and replied okay first second I know it's mating season. Why do you think I've been doing it myself for so long hell since we've been around him? His scent alone flares my desires, though him doing this to me doesn't help my problem. Then if you want to wait then at least do things orally. Then hell in terms of demons age you're old enough for that so in the eyes of humans it's frowned upon. But with demons, it's an everyday thing. But just sleep with him, and no not sleep with him Ridge remarked. As I walked towards the house, and up the stairs I responded I know. But damn it, I don't want to rush things you know. Knowledge sighed, and said look Raven let's be truthful. You staved off your heat either from self-ministrations or your make-out sessions with him. But at the most you've got a year two years max before you go feral, and take him whether you're ready or not. I groaned in both frustration and pleasure hearing the bathwater running, making me think appreciatively I love that man. But fine I'll talk to him about this okay, if he is willing to help me stave off my feral desires, till I'm ready to reciprocate okay. They all nodded in my head, and saw Naruto without his shirt showing his scars, and two particularly long scars going parallel with each other, as they go down his sides from the collarbone to the heels of his feet. I know I shouldn't be staring, but I love him, and his body. He turned to me, and said well your bath is all heated up Ray enjoy yourself giving me a kiss, as he walked out the door. Regular POV, man what to cook for dinner tonight. Naruto said aloud, as he walked towards his room to take a bath at his bedroom shower. When are you gonna claim your mate boss? A voice in his head said. He got in the shower after it reached the appropriate temperature, and said I told you temperance when she is ready to I will accept I won't force her. After the first month of Naruto staying in Azerath, he was pulled into his mindscape to meet several depalgingers of his in different clothes and colors. Red was fury, blue was joy, white was temperance, virtue, gray was sadness, green was wisdom, black was vengeance. There were several others, but they tend to keep to themselves. Anyways Temperance said I know King, and that's why she loves you, you honor, and respect women. He chuckled, as he rinsed out his hair of the soap, and thought I can't help but wonder when the cycle starts. I want to be prepared to keep me from jumping Raven Chan. Wisdom said adjusting his glasses you've got two years before your will breaks, and Jumper even thought you two do your recreational activities that states your lust for each other for a moment. Naruto nodded, and said thanks for any suggestions, as to what to make for dinner. 
As soon as those words left his lips every emotion in his mind roared voicing what he should make, and arguments going on between an emotion's polar opposites, as they clash sometimes in three-person brawls. He sighed, and tuned them out leaving his bathroom using a combination of fire release, and futon, wind release, to dry off, as his body began to radiate steam. He placed on some baggy black sweepants that barely hung at his waist, dripping slightly with a grey muscle shirt tucked into the pants. As he walked downstairs he heard Raven still splashing around in the tub across from his room, meaning she was still bathing. He thought Ravens mastered the intermediate physical training schedule earlier than I had anticipated. Now I gotta get a real training regimen set up what all will I need. His body on autopilot he made three clones to prepare a decent midnight dinner. He grabbed a piece of paper and wrote his thoughts. I'm gonna need to pick her fighting style or two to learn. She learned how to use a large number of combat weapons, meaning should her powers no longer work she would be able to defend herself. I've already trained her in seals at the Uzumaki level. She would be a high chun in low. Her stamina is while not as high as mine is still something to be amazed with. Tactics and strategies she can give Inara for their money, but that doesn't mean she's the best. I've refrained from teaching her the excessive ninjutsu till her control and reserves were high enough including her yokai to train her in. Now with her reserves in terms of a tailed beast which I feel if I mark her will become one will be as strong as the 8 or 7 tails, but she has amazed me to no end thus far. She might have more than me now it's been a while since I've checked. I'll train her in her elemental manipulation when I figure out her affinity. He felt something supple, and a form pressed into his back. As a pair of arms wrapped around his waist he said, Hey Ravenheim what's up? She kissed the back of his neck, as she stroked his cheek with her thumb, making him go rigid, and purr uncontrollably. He thought I purr, even though I'm a wolf I will never understand myself. Raven said in his ear what are you doing Narukan? This is the second time in a single day I've gotten the better of you. Are you okay? He smiled, and said yeah it's just that we've gotten your basic training up to the point where you're ready for the real training in the chamber. You remember what I said in the chamber right? He felt her nod, as she responded knowingly with a smile of course the chamber in the room is a training ground created by your mother that bends space, and time to flow differently outside of the flow of the world around it to be either faster or slower. For example if you wanted to slow time down in a year there would be a month or two outside. Or in reverse right Naruto-kun. He smiled, and said that's right for the week after next, we will spend 4 months in the chamber, which will be 2 years in there alright. Although my mom seemed kind of vague, as to certain things like how we would age if we're outside of the world's control of time. She smiled, and said okay, so what will I be learning from my sensei? She said teasingly. He handed her the papers, and waited for her to respond while thinking with his 3-1. What is all of this? The gravity and resistance seals are going to be advanced by 4 levels. Zero. He smiled, and said well of the chamber's gravity is already greater than Earth's by three times. Thanks to your demonic blood the your already body is going to adjust to the difference in gravity. He turned around to see her wearing a one of his oversized white shirts, that hang off one shoulder that came just below the hip, giving him a peek at her red panties. With her seeing this she said something you like Naruto-kun, teasingly lifting the hem of the shirt, giving him more of a view of her underwear. He growled lightly grabbing her waist pulling her towards himself, saying always do, but dinner is ready, so let's eat made your favor to celebrate your completion of your basic training, even in the arts the monks teach. Raven knows her lover and all, but the actual act is easy to forgive, but the monks, and by extension her mother, are in the shit list with her father at the second position of the list, her mother taking first, and the monks third. She asked why her mother take first, yet her father was second his answer was even, though he is a monster who ruined your life, he did one good thing that made him okay in my book by a degree he made you my dark angel, those were the words that got the two of them together. They ate in comfortable silence, watched a few movies cozied up on the couch till they decided to turn in, but to Naruto the entire time they were spending together, it seemed like something was on her mind like she was apprehensive about about something. As they reached their rooms he said night raven sleep well love. As he kissed her about to go into his room when he felt a pair of arms wrap around his waist. As she said Naruto kun can I sleep with you from here on. I I can't sleep without you near me anymore. He smiled as he turned around to face having to look down slightly since the top of her head came to his chin making their height difference with Naruto being 4'9 as she was 4746. He brought his hand to her chin tilting her head up and said of course you don't have to ask Raven Chan you know that. Bringing her lips closer he kissed her briefly and said let's get to bed okay love. She buried her head in his chest, and nodded, walking into the bedroom laying down in the large king-size bed with her head laying on his chest directly over his heart, listening to it beat lightly, as if she was listening to a soft symphony. He stroked her head gently, and said good night Travenheim see you in the morning. She looked up, and said good night Narukan see you in the morning. Week overview. Over the week the two spent it just relaxing, and helping Raven adjust to her body's adjustments to the gravity, and resistance seals, since he had her deactivate them. Thanks to those seals she can run, as fast, as Lee could with his weight on, and half, as fast, as he can without them, and while her strength isn't, as far, as Tsunade's she can still destroy a decent sized building with minor injury to herself. 
but with the shadow clone training method which they found out like Naruto doesn't suffer the mental overload and uses them as a boon in her training in the medical field. While she can't heal virtually anything like Tsunade once could, she can heal anything up to a removed limb which came in handy when Naruto was training. He accidentally removed his hand. Don't ask, she just laughed at his mistake for the rest of the week. The next week, as the sunlight showed through the curtains, and across the room the two demons shared for an entire week. As the rays bent across the room they struck the new lord of the Biju, making him groan blinking blearily, and irritably thinking one day I will destroy the sun, even if it kills me. Yeah, you're a bit overly dramatic aren't you? Happy said in a joyous tone that made him groan further. I've never been a morning person you know that on that note or a night owl for that matter he thought. More Khan Raven murmured unknowingly pushing herself deeper against him bushing her developing chest against him, making him blush as his emotions laughed. He grumbled though shut up. Damn it now I don't want to move, what to do, what to do. You could always just stay there till she wakes up temper and suggested making him nod. So he did, and waited for another hour since he woke up at 5 in the morning. He was always the type to be an early riser, brushing his hand through the sea of purple, and white hearing her moan. As she stirred she blinked blearily feeling a comfortable warmth, and something stroking her. As she looked up she woke fully to see the man she's loved for two months look at her contentedly with a smile, and love in those grey white eyes she loved so much. She shifted till her stomach was on his, and they were face to face she said softly morning how long have you been awake? He smiled softly kissing her, and said not too long at least half an hour I was just so comfortable I didn't want to move. She smiled, adjusting herself till she was straddling his stomach, her thighs gripping tightly to his sides, as she looked down at him, and said so we're going on that two year training regimen today, right? He placed his hands on her waist, and said yup, so you might want to pack some stuff for that you can do during breaks like books or something. She bends down till they were face to face, and said with a sultry smile okay wolfie, but what if it's something is right under me? He smirked, and said well I guess we'll just have to wait hull of, but what makes you think you can handle me? She grinned showing her sharp fangs, as she brings herself closer towards his neck, and graze his neck with her teeth, making him groan, as she smirks, and says I know I can handle you because I'm the only one who knows you Wolfie. He chuckles thinking true she does. No shit she knows everything about us favorite foods, and activities you like to do when you're bored happy said, as he tuned them out kissing her lightly. He sighed sadly, and said love, as much, as I would enjoy being with you like this, and I can't believe I am saying this, but we gotta get ready or we're never gonna start your training. She gave a fake pout, and said damn, and I was just getting in the mood. He chuckled, as he sat up with her in his lap kissing her again, and said hey play your cards right, and maybe just maybe while we're training, you might get a reward for being a good girl. She smiled at him with lidded eyes, and kissed him before running towards the shower, leaving Naruto in his room to bathe, and prepare breakfast. He looked towards his alarm clock, as it read 625, making him smirk thinking let's see for the training ground time flows differently, so to prepare the body will flow with the time flow of the realm therein, so if me and Raven are going in there for 4 months then our bodies will age by 4 years to prepare during the war, while I was training to master Karama's power, it took about a mont each too. He paused while in the shower, and thought I still haven't mastered my own yaokai. I mean I can use 4 tails worth of power without losing my control, so I gotta train in that aspect. Getting out of the shower, and looking in the mirror he activated his eyes. They were purple with 6 coincided rings going from the pupil out, while the inner 3 rings were red with the basic Shuringen eye, with one tomo spinning lazily around the pupil each. He thought what does it do I mean with the Shuringen it lets the user copy anything they see, and slows down time for the user, capable of making ocular illusions, and use of a Madarasu, Kamui, Izanagi, Izanagi and Susanoo, along with Tsukiyomi. Well the Rinnegan lets the user manipulate the elements and gravity but with these new eyes who knows what they can do I'll have to take this slow, don't want to do something recklesses. Getting out he changed into a red form of the clothes he wore previously, and packed similar clothes of different colors into a moderately large duffel bag. He made his way towards the study, and smirked seeing a large pile of scrolls ranging from Tajutsu, Ninjutsu, Medical Ninjutsu, and sealed them all into a large scroll attaching it to the small of his backward chakra. Making his way back he started making breakfast which included a large variety of toast, sausage, pancakes, orange juice, fruit, and many other hearty varieties. As he waited he began writing out Raven's training schedule which comprised of Raven's training schedule, years 1-2, Ninjutsu chakra control and techniques and add chakra suppression seals to increase her reserves from high to at least that of the three tails by end of the second year to jutsu increase weight and resistance seals to increase her speed strength and stamina and work on her natural flexibility and find her suitable to jutsu style or styles medical ninjutsu teach her the human anatomy to further her training in the medical arts and use medical supplies i.e scalpels, needles, etc. Further her training in weapons, and throwing weapons including how to counter them. Years 3 to 4, Fuenjutsu. Increase her skill in from Uzumaki Mido Uzumaki a leader higher, and increase her speed when doing the seals. Tajutsu. Further advance her master in close combat. Ninjutsu. 
further increase her reserves from 3 tails to at the minimum 6 tails, and speed of hand seals, and improve her ability to use her, her original skill in chakra, the abilities she had originally, and work on handless seals. Yaokai training. Help her have full control of her demonic chakra, making Trigon's power her own, making her power from the equivalent of the two tails, to that of at least the four tails. As he inspected her training regimen he heard a seat grind against the hardwood floor next to him, and said hey love eat up once we're finished we can head out to train. She nodded, and stacked her plate with several slices of toast covered in jelly, a few dozen pieces of bacon, and sausage, some eggs, and a half a mile high stack of pancakes with syrup. Let it be known that due to demon's abnormally high metabolism throwing in with Naruto's training from hell she's become, as bad a bottomless pit, as Naruto who had two times, as much, as Raven. After eating their fill of the banquet style breakfast Naruto saw the clock in the kitchen read 7.25, and said well Ravenheim you got everything you're going to need for our time in the chamber, because it's going to be some time before we get back. She nodded, as they made their way towards the door with a huge seal across from it, and said well let's get this show on the road. He applied chakra to the seal making the room glow with a blinding white light, causing them to shield their eyes. As they waited for the light to fade when it dimmed the door was no longer sealed, as Naruto opened the door, and said well let's go these next four years won't wait for anyone. Walking through with Raven following close behind him to never be seen to the world for four months. Inside the training ground, everything about the training ground blew Naruto and Raven's mind, as they saw a giant phosphorescent tree in the middle of a giant lake, which, as they looked up made them come to the conclusion of there being inside a cave of some sort a few yards away, was a large house one which was slightly smaller than the one they've been in for a few months, while all around the cavern were average sized trees, which while not as bright as the one in the lake but still had that faint phosphorescent glow to it, giving the area that soft sea green glow, if they were to look up, they would see rocks floating high above them. 3. Before either of them knew it the gravity of the world hit them quite hard, making them realize the gravity was at least 3 or 4 times that of Earth. Raven was the first to speak her amazement it's beautiful here so peaceful he could only nod in agreement, as he was too estranged in the environment's wonder as he could feel the natural energy was over him in this domain, with the focal point being the tree, as it radiated it at immense levels, to where it could be felt in every molecule in the air, the water surrounding the tree, and the earth they're standing on. Naruto turned to Raven, and said well let's go take a look at the place we'll be staying in for the next 4 years, love from what my mom told me about this place the supplies within stay stocked, so we don't need to worry on the food shortage or if it's spoiling with us around her. Huh? She had to suppress a snort. The two of them could eat at several restaurants before going out of business, and still have enough room for seconds. As they made their way towards their temporary home for the next 4 years, the more of the home they began to see. Outside the house was an outdoor, and indoor hot spring bath for the two of them to use. Inside the home was a replica of the house from the location of their rooms all the way to the indoor bathhouse. The only difference to the rooms was that they were slightly bigger with bigger beds. He turned to Raven, as they set their clothes in the dresser together in one of the bedrooms, and said well Ray we got 4 years, so let's get this training regimen started alright. She nodded rather quickly with a small smile on her face, thinking I wonder what we're going to be doing for the next 4 years. Wisdom shrugged, and said if it's an advancement from the last few months of training, the basics he's going to be doing the serious training, which means he's going to have us learn a fighting style or more increase our stamina. He's going to increase our chakra control and reserves, find out our elemental affinity or affinities, and learn outside the elemental properties, and further improve our medical skills. Same for Fuenjutsu. We know the basic seals like barriers and suppression seals. He's probably going to teach us the more advanced seals. Rage and the others nodded while she said and he may likely help you train in controlling your demonic energy. We already can control it to a near total unison for a couple hours before we fall back into a rage. He might also help focus on weapons or weapons to use, should our powers stop working so we can defend ourselves. She and the others had to agree with their logic seeing, as they already had a basic understanding of their training. As she finished putting up their clothes he said alright, let's get into our training gear and head outside and get these first two years over with. Nodding she grabbed her training clothes which consisted of a tight navy blue sports bra, and from what Naruto calls the manu style pants with a pair of sandals running downstairs, where she sees him sitting outside under a tree near the house, as he waited for her. He opened an eye and said while closing them again, as he said alright now Raven, as you know over the last few months from our time in Azerat. I've been training you, and I have been grading your skills by the way my world graded someone's skills. He pulled out a scroll, and tossed it to her, as he said, and these are your rankings accordingly. Once she opened them the scroll read, Rachel Raven Raw, Dejutsu. High, no known fighting style and repertoire, Ninjutsu. Low, can sense illusions, and negate them, and use high C rank without much problem, Ninjutsu. High Genin, no known outside of the non-elemental range amount known 10, Kinjutsu. Mit knows how to read opponents, and react, and counter the enemy, and is capable of adjusting to whatever weapon she picks up no known preference to use. Medical Ninjutsu. 
Lo can use several high ranking and can heal every surface injury and a few interior injuries and is well traversed in the medicine and poisons. Uzumaki Chunin knows all basic seals and several advanced seals. Stamina. High Chunin Lo Jianin. Chakra Reserves. High Chunin gotta get that to that of the three tails or higher by the first year. Chakra Control. Lo Chunin gotta improve that. Yaokai. Can use stay in control of that energy for a time frame of 4 hours before loss of control. As Raven looked over her records, she had to think wow just from the basics he's taught me most of my skills are above much to my surprise. Knowledge said it's to be expected since he had us learn the shadow clone to help with the control and other techniques that don't require something physical like. And the like what I'm curious about is how he intends to get our reserves up so high. She was wondering how that was going to happen herself. So she asked Naruto Khan not that I'm questioning your sanity. But how on your mother's green earth do you intend to get my reserves that high in the first two years of the training session? He gave a dark grin making her uneasy why Raven Chan it's a good thing you asked. As I'm going to be placing a chakra depletion seal on your person with that seal, it will rapidly absorb your chakra, till you start to suffer from chakra exhaustion. And during the night it will deactivate making your reserves refill, forcing your reserves to expand at an high rate. Will you do that you're going to be training in the following he gave her a scroll. As she heard this she, and the others paled making rage, say out loud damn not even I'm that sadistic. He said so let's get ready for hell shall we? She had to suppress a shiver when he said that with an innocent expression which scared the hell out of her making the empath. And to think what fresh hell have I just stepped into. Thanks for watching my video, leave a like if you enjoyed my video, and also do consider subscribing to my channel for more awesome content. See you next time, till then sayonara.